So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ahmaduhu wa usalli ala rasulil kareem. Amma ba'd. Inshallah, I want to share with you something. But before I do, I want you to understand that every word of the Qur'an is true. And every indication of Qur'an is true. And so we're going to look at this from different perspectives uh, today, inshallah ta'ala. But let's go over this verse of the Qur'an. Ayah number 41 of Surah Al-Kabut. Now, please remember, uh, Surah Al-Kabut and Surah Al-Rum are twin surahs. Okay? And so they have a strong relationship with one another. So, keeping this in mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْلِيَا Those people <coughs> who take other than Allah as protectors, okay, كَمَثَلِ الْأَنْكَبُوتِ Their example is of a spider, and they're taking protection, the spider's taking protection, اتَّخَذَتْ بَيْتًا is like the spider when it makes its house made of this web. Okay? On the one side, on the one side, the web, the silk is very strong. This silk is stronger than steel. But the foundations are so weak that when you take off one part of the web, and it's easy to take it off, all you have to do is have the determination to do it, and the whole thing begins to fall apart. Even though it may be strong internally, but its foundations are never strong. And so it is the weakest of the house because of this. Okay? And so, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْلِيَاءِ كَمَثَلِ الْأَنْكَبُوتِ اتَّخَذُ بَيْتًا إِنَّ أَحْوَلًا الْبَيُوتِ the most fragile of the houses is the house of the spider. If you did but know. If you want to look at how strong it is, people can be fooled into thinking it's really strong because it does have strong internal aspects to it. But uh, in fact, the foundations of it are very weak. And the foundations of any riba system are very weak because it's based upon debt. But let's now move to the next part I want to share with you. Is the world financial system that allows trading between the human beings. Like for example the internet. The internet is a very powerful system. But all it takes is one solar flare or electrical outage and all your digital currency gone. All it takes is for somebody to go to the 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 seabed and cut the uh, the wires that connect the world in the seabed. That's all. It'll take one submarine with one attack and the whole system is shut down. Okay, so it's strong, it's useful, it does its job, uh, but the foundations are weak. And the same thing with the financial system. It's the same financial system around the world, just like a web. As you see here, this is called SWIFT. Okay, This is the world uh, financial system that they have that allows people to trade in dollars and trade with each other internationally. Okay, So, so SWIFT stands for Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. Okay, So... Uh, this uh, SWIFT uh, banking system right, has been used now in this same year to shut off funds for two countries, as you'll see in this conversation that I'm going to show you. Uh, the UN, the EU bars seven Russian banks from SWIFT. Okay, So meaning uh, this system, this financial system, people, uh, Russia has been banned from using it to be able to trade in the world. And uh, then you can also remember how cutting Russia from SWIFT will change the financial landscape. Okay. And uh, then you also, how significant is Russia's partial ban from SWIFT? Okay. Um, the U.S. Treasury announced an unprecedented and expense, expansive sanctions against Russia, imposing SWIFT and severe economic uh, uh, costs. Uh, banning Russia from SWIFT is a big deal. Okay, 
And then here's an example of the other country. U.S. freezes central bank assets of $9.5 billion of Afghanistan, right? Trying to put Afghanistan on the brink of a financial collapse. So now the dollar is being used as a weapon by not allowing people to trade in dollar because SWIFT allows people to trade and that's the world currency, the world reserve. So what happens? So this system that is so strong, it looks so strong, but in fact is very weak. And so this is what we're going to uh, talk about that. And, and what's interesting, right, even for the, um, let me show you, um, what's interesting is uh, even for these, uh, you know, in Russia, for example, Visa, MasterCard block Russian financial institutions. And then you have, for example, um, uh, them also blocking the Google and Apple Pay. So Apple Pay, Google Pay, not accessible for cards of Russian banks. So, you know, they have to change all their ATM cards. And uh, here, let me show you this. Um, so this is uh, like an example of the even the Internet that I was talking about, the World Wide Web. These are the cable lines in the deep ocean, okay, where they have these cable lines that allow the whole Internet to work. And uh, this is how these cable lines are. Um, okay, our Wi-Fi world and Internet still depends on undersea cables. Okay, so it's a very weak system. If somebody had a submarine, they could easily do damage. This is also the logo of the Ankabut, the house of the spider, Beit al-Ankabut, is also the, the, the logo of the Internet. Because even though the internet is very strong, but in fact, the foundations are not that strong. And this is the same thing with uh, Swift. Okay, Swift has the same type of logo. Uh, it is a very fragile uh, place to place your eggs. Okay, so with this in mind, uh, let us look at this uh, discussion, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, I'm going to put it in a faster speed. Um, so we can have uh... so let's see if this works hello and welcome to dialogue saudi arabia is reportedly accelerating the talks with beijing to price some of its oil sales to china in renminbi this move is believed likely to reduce the u.s dollar's dominance of the global oil market how would the switching to the yuan affect the chinese currency's international status and the global financial system how Western sanctions on Russia may also spur efforts to use the Chinese Yuan. To discuss these issues and more, I'm joined by Liu Zhuqian, Senior Fellow at the Chongyang Institute for Financial Studies of Renmin University of China, Professor Jun Qian, Executive Dean of the Fanghai International School of Finance of Fudan University, and Professor Gao Luft, Co-Director of the Institute for the Analysis of Global Security, who is also a professor at Austin Technical University. That's our topic. I'm Xu Qian Duo. So from... So from time to time, I'll interject and make some comments based upon uh, what we discussed of the verse of the Quran. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Uh, now I'll start with you. You know, Saudi Arabia is reportedly in talks with China to use the Chinese currency RMB or Yuan in oil sales to China. So what's your gut response to the news? You know, uh, why now? I think it's a very important effect. So as you all may know that uh, Saudi Arabia is thinking of now because, look, the, UN, the United States is using the dollar as a weapon. So now, of course, any every country is thinking, wait, what if I, what if I become the enemy tomorrow? And the Saudi real is pegged to the dollar. So if the, if the, if the dollar falls, the U.S. funds fall. And so now, it's maybe a good idea to look for an alternative from the Saudi perspective. So this is what they're discussing because Saudi Arabia is now considering trading in uh, in, in Chinese uh, funds. You know, to the global market, okay, uh, Saudi Arabia Go ahead. has now, yeah. hello, yes, has decided to use the renminbi yuan to make the transaction. This is really very good and a positive signal to the world market. We see that the most stability in the oil field and also 
in the international trading uh, system could have another alternative to settle down this uh, payment. So as you know, that oil trading and international trading generally is done only in dollars. But after what happened to Afghanistan, and especially what's happened after Russia, now there's talks about allowing trading to happen in other uh, uh, currencies other than the U.S. dollar. So if the dollar uh, loses its position, just like the British sterling was at the top at one time and then it lost its position as number one, if the dollar loses its position, uh, then uh, what, what are the consequences of that? Okay. As we know that the renminbi yuan is uh, very stable and very reliable and many countries are trying to use the renminbi as their tools of uh, transaction and uh, all, of course the RMB is the currency of China. This is uh, very important not only for China and Saudi Arabia but because it's very important to stabilize the financial system globally and we see a lot of the contributions that could be made by our two sides. But this uh, concept that will be realized uh, sooner or later, that could be very uh, strong uh, uh, driving force that uh, to stimulate the economic recovery the world wide. So in this way that we should hope that uh, both sides could have close cooperation. And also we should consider that the hidden risks behind it and also uh, work out a uh, uh, good and uh, positive measures that uh, to guide the line this uh, uh, transaction because the renminbi yuan is uh, very important in the world market how to stabilize uh, such a transaction and uh, gather more experiences that uh, for other countries this is quite an important uh, factor mm -hmm. uh, professor laft uh, you know what's your gut response to this news you know we are talking about accelerating the talks between saudi arabia and china on the use of the Chinese currency in their sales to China. Uh, so why acceleration now? Well, I think that uh, the events of the past uh, few weeks have uh, rattled many uh, countries and many central bankers uh, because some unprecedented steps uh, were taken by the West uh, against Russia. Um, including the freezing of uh, central bank reserves. And by the way, it's the second time that it's happening in less than a year, because the first time, uh, as you know, it happened in Afghanistan. So uh, twice, um, something has been sacrosanct. Central bank reserves, these are things that you don't touch. It's, they're not yours. And all of a sudden, they're being frozen. Uh, that is a shock to the system. That is uh, going to shape the thinking of many central bankers around the world um, when it comes to their allocation of reserves. It also, uh, when it comes to petrostates, uh, it will raise questions. Do we want to continue to peg our currency to the dollar? Do we want to continue to uh, uh, sell our commodities? Uh, not only oil, by the way, also gas and, and food commodities and minerals. Uh, everything is uh, um, denominated uh, with dollars. So um, that is going to be a, a moment in which everybody will have to recalculate their moves. And I think it's a watershed moment in, in world financial history. Mm -hmm. Well, Professor Chen Jun, uh, you were nodding your head while Gao is uh, talking about uh, you know the simple reason for its simple background. Let's say we will talk more about that. Uh, but then, if Saudi Arabia and China they choose to do so, uh, obviously they will benefit from such a potential cooperation. Tell us what kind of benefit you know for China and for Saudi Arabia. Sure. So <clears throat> for China, obviously, uh, to have part of the a larger share of the global oil market to be priced and then also to be settled in RMB is important. Uh, because this, this means our RMB is becoming more of a global currency, at least in the commodities market. It's also very good for Chinese firms. If a, a larger fraction of the oil and gas is uh, priced in RMB, it's actually much easier for Chinese firms when they look at this global market. Uh, they have less, much less currency risk to hedge. But on the other hand, it's also very important to Saudi Arabia. We know that Saudi Arabia's currency, the real, is pegged to the dollar for the last 50 years. That is, they have a fixed exchange rate to the dollar. So uh, whether the uh, whether the Saudi oil is priced in RMB or the dollar for Saudi, they're going to still have this uncertainty between the dollar and the RMB. But as pointed out, uh, Saudi has basically uh, uh, accumulated a lot of uh, dollar assets, right? Because uh, uh, because its own currency is pegged to the dollar. So from the standpoint 
of the Saudi government and investors, it's actually very important to diversify uh, their asset allocation. And, and as pointed out, RMB is a very stable currency. And if you look at the medium long term run, RMB probably will continue to appreciate against all the other major currencies. And also very important for Saudi Arabia, China is their largest trading partner. When they export oil to, to uh, China, when they get the RMB, they can use the RMB to buy stuff, goods and services from China. In that regard, they face less currency risk. So, altogether, this is a win-win situation for both China and Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, well, back to you, uh, Professor uh, Luft. Uh, obviously, you see this, uh, you know, there's uh, people see the vulnerability because of the sanctions on the uh, Russian side and also the uh, central bank assets you know, being seized by Washington uh, from Afghanistan. Uh, so diversification seems to be the natural choice. Uh, is it the case? Yes, and let me just say that um, we're talking a lot about Saudi Arabia, but let's not forget Saudi Arabia was the main underwriter of the petrodollar system. Uh, when, uh, when the petrodollar system was created in the 1970s, Saudi Arabia was the first one, and then all of OPEC countries followed, and that's how the dollar became dominant in the oil market. Uh, now that the Saudis are looking into um, to exit, uh, or maybe looking to exit uh, or to, or to um, diversify, um, other OPEC countries, other countries uh, are likely to follow. So that's not only a story about Saudi Arabia. It's a story about all of OPEC countries. And it's not only a story of oil. It's a story of all the global commodities, uh, which means that if um, uh, oil goes, uh, uh, the de-dollarization in oil markets will almost uh, for sure uh, become a harbinger of uh, de-dollarization of the entire global commodity market. Now that doesn't mean that dollar is going away. Okay, let's let's make it uh, very clear. Dollar is not going away anytime soon. Just like the British pound uh, did not disappear from the face of the earth, it's still a very important currency. It only means that we are moving from a system of uh, currency uh, unipolarity to uh, currency multipolarity, in which several currencies can compete against each other. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Liu uh, Zhicheng. You know, if you look at the talks between China and Saudi Arabia, which have been going on, you know, off and on for six years, uh, are we going to see this time around substantial progress in that regard? Yes, surely. That as we know that uh, this negotiation and discussion have been lasting over six years because of different conditions, especially in the international business atmosphere, and also the Saudi Arabia also are looking uh, deeply in the situation and the relation with the United States. And also, we can see that when the conditions are mature, that always in the good time and the right time that we can uh, uh, facilitate and accelerate the realization of the RMB transaction for all your uh, business. This is very important for both sides. If, if, we, if we recognize or conduct it uh, in the early time or uh, in the too hurry time, that we're still facing many challenges that we could not solve. Nowadays, I think that time is very uh, good for both sides to make such decisions, as the, the other professors have already mentioned. Now the geopolitical situation made the situation more serious. And we can see that the transaction with the Chinese yuan is more stable, more comfortable, and more secure. This is what we have learned from the geopolitical situation. And also the dollar supremacy made some more difficulties, and the United States make dollar transaction as a tool for sanction, as a tool for political purposes. So it is already, that means they weaponized or politicalized, but this is nothing to do with the renminbi yuan. That's why that many people in the countries now prefer that to use the renminbi as their transaction, those because of, because of the, not only the stability, but also it's a very uh, confident and also very reliable uh, currency. By doing so, that China also can promote all the relations on the equal, transparent, more secure the ways that to safeguard all interests and the best benefits related to all countries. So this transaction with Saudi Arabia will be setting up a very good and a positive example for other countries to follow up. We hope that this procedure could be realized, could be conducted as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Professor Loft, obviously, you know, um, as the Wall Street Journal reported that a senior U.S. official called the idea of the Saudi Arabia selling oil to China in Chinese yuan highly volatile and aggressive, quote-unquote, and not very likely. Um, you know, it's, it's like between China and the U.S., it's somehow people see that, you know, geopolitical factors are also playing a role. Uh, is that the case? You know, some people say, oh, the Saudi Arabia is calling the U.S. bluff by uh, releasing the information that we are talking to China to pay in Chinese yuan. Uh, so what do you make of that? 
Well, that's an interesting question. First of all, I do not exclude the possibility that the Saudi leak about this uh, was mainly to get Washington's attention. Uh, the Saudis have a lot of reasons to be upset with Washington. Uh, the relations are not great at the moment, and it may be that it's just a, a way of them to signal to Washington, listen, if you don't change your attitude towards us, if you don't take us seriously, uh, we can do a lot of uh, harm to, to the, the very same system that underwrites uh, your economy. Uh, uh, but uh, definitely, I think this is um, the beginning of a, a new phase in the U.S.-China relations. Uh, we started with a trade war, then uh, we moved into uh, uh, all kind of uh, uh, you know, terrorist economic warfare, and that's sort of the, the, the crescendo is uh, when you start dealing with currency war um, between the two um, largest economies in the world, uh, you can only imagine how many more uh, fronts and, and uh, tensions will be added uh, to the U.S.-China relations as we move forward. Uh, this is not a good uh, way to uh, promote or to, uh, to move forward the relations uh, because it's important to understand what is at stake here. What is at stake here is America's ability to fund one or two or three trillion dollar a year deficit as it has been doing for the past several years. When you want to run a one trillion or two trillion dollar deficit, you need to raise the money somehow. You increase your debt. And who is going to be the underwriters of this debt? Uh, it's countries that are willing to buy your bonds. And if they don't trust you, they will not buy your bonds. Or they will not dig deeper into, into the hole that they are already in. Uh, you know, there are a lot of talks about China's debt trap. but the $1 trillion or the $30 trillion um, national debt of the United States is, is the mother of all debt traps because uh, nobody can really uh, afford to, to move out of this trap because then you lose your, your, your investment. So I think this is what is at stake. Uh, will the United States be able to run those crazy deficits? Uh, uh, and the only way it can do it is if it can continue to sell dollar-denominated debt. Mm -hmm. well, Professor Chen Juen, of course, when you look at this uh, in a hopeful prospect of uh, uh, dealing with oil sale in uh, the Chinese yuan, of course, there's a point because China is the top uh, buyer of Saudi Arabia's uh, oil in the 25% of their exports. I mean, naturally, uh, I would say it's logic simply to pay in yuan instead of US dollar. But still, people see the limit of uh, uh, the internationalization of yuan because of the you know lack of uh, convertibility, for example, and uh, you know probably more liberalization of the financial market in China. You know, in, uh, simply the Chinese market uh, lack of liberalization. They would say they point to that. So how far do you think, you know, you know, in that respect, we can go in terms of paying in yuan uh, or the use of yuan? So uh, as uh, one of the speakers already said, uh, even even if this materializes, that is, even if Saudi Arabia agrees to uh, to price part of its oil export to China in RMB, although this is a very important step for RMB internationalization, we're still talking about the U.S. dollar being the most dominant currency. So. So even if that materialized soon, it will not change the fact that the dollar remains uh, the global uh, reserve currency. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, as uh, as our guest already uh, 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 said, this can open a, a, a new path for other countries, uh, the OPEC countries for oil and gas, maybe other countries when they're exporting uh, commodities to China. So, so things can uh, uh, move rather quickly once this first step is undertaken. So... Uh, but on the other hand, as you said, uh, for RMB to be truly a global currency, especially a reserve currency, uh, uh, RMB has to be more freely convertible. Uh, it has to be completely uh, priced by market forces, uh, and also the, the, the capital inflow and outflow uh, should be will be more free. That said, to me, the natural next step is for the RMB to take a much bigger share in trade. Right? We know that China is already by far the largest trading partner for most of the countries in the world, including Saudi Arabia, uh, ASEAN countries, for example. For China, it, it makes a lot of sense, and their trading partners. You know, for, for, for example, uh, uh, China and a lot of these ASEAN countries, why should we use a third currency when we do a lot of business bilateral front, right? So by using RMB, which itself is a stable currency, both sides can hedge a lot of risk and, and, and already discussed that even though dollar re remains the most dominant currency, the U.S. economy has some issues. The Federal Reserve, uh, you can challenge whether their, their monetary policy over the last two years is really responsible or not, among other issues. So it means uh, it makes a lot of sense for a lot of countries when they have bilateral trade with China 
they should use China. They should use R and B as the first choice to settle bilateral trade. So I think that step is the is very uh, it could be achieved without uh, making a lot of fundamental changes to other sides of the Chinese currency policies. And I do expect that if this uh, Saudi Arabia China agreement can be reached, R and B may well likely be playing a much more important role. In settling trades, especially settling trades between China and their uh, trading partners.、Mm-hmm. Well,、uh, Zhu Qian, you know, Professor Liu, speak of the role、uh, you know, by RMB, the Chinese currency.、Uh, of course, the news came after、uh, what happened、uh, in the Ukraine crisis between Russia and Ukraine. Russia was sanctioned,、uh, sanctioned you know, by the Western countries, basically、uh, unprecedented sanctions. Let's say、uh, the central bank reserve half of them were frozen. And also, the you know, seven of the banks were cut off from the international finance messaging system SWIFT.、Uh, so people pointed to the RMB as a alternative payment system for Russia to continue its trade with other, you know, beyond the Western countries.、Uh, so do you think that's the、uh, workable way? And、uh, you know, what a role China, you know, Chinese yuan could play, probably,、uh, for example, in the settlement between、uh, the trade between China and, and Russia, because you can't use U.S. dollar, you can't use euro, you can't use、uh, you know, pound sterling. Probably yuan is a natural choice. Yes, I think so because、uh, this situation is made by the United States by the Western countries sanction against Russia because Russia itself didn't want to be、uh, spelled out of the SWIFT system, but the Western countries and the European countries try to、uh, split this system、uh, with、uh, Russia. That means that Russia has no way out, has no way other than to do any business and international transaction. But if the business、uh, between China and Russia is still going on and is still booming, or、uh, what? Countries we should need the dollar cannot is not allowed. This is not a fault of Russian or of China. So we have to find another currency to <coughs> instead of the U.S. dollar. So this、uh, situation is made by the Western sanction against、uh, Russia. Actually, one thing I think we should point out that to miss to have uh, uh, avoided to any misunderstandings in the global market. That means the transaction with the Russian business partner. Uh, with the Chinese yuan is not try to challenge the status of、uh, U.S. dollar domination. Is not try to replace U.S. dollar supremacy. But as we already said that for Russia, they have no other way to other currencies to do any business, and they should survive. They should still develop. The do business is their human rights. Is the basic rights of any country. So by doing so, that China is trying to make this、uh, transaction more safe, more reliable, and we. Support all the countries who try to develop their own economy. It, of course, it's better to use, or we prefer to use the Chinese yuan as an alternative. But we do not want to do it really as to replace the、uh, U.S. dollar's、uh, domination. Because I should say frankly, renminbi yuan at the moment in international market is still weak.、Mm-hmm. It's not strong enough. And as we know that by swift、uh, swift transaction every year. That China is the only three to five percent is still far lower than、uh, euro than U.S. dollar. So we need a lot of time and effort to increase to strengthen our economic power and also to get more business opportunity. Professor Laughter, obviously, you know、uh, the case、uh, in Russia、uh, is like a wake up call for a lot of、uh, particular developing countries. Probably,、uh, if they are not allied with the United States or G7 countries, you know, there's、uh, they see the potential vulnerability of their reliance on the U.S. dollars in their、uh, central bank foreign reserve because one day that kind of reserve could be frozen by U.S. and even、uh, you know seized.、Uh, In, you know, your central bank assets could be taken away by the U.S.、Uh, so、uh, there is a need for them to diversify, and then, and then somehow maybe、uh, to become the natural choice. Correct, and、uh, those countries have、um, choices that、uh, many other countries don't have. For example, they can embark in barter deals in which、uh, they don't really、uh, use the currency, but they exchange commodities against,、uh, let's say, infrastructure projects and so forth.、Uh, they can engage in currency swaps. Uh, and there are、uh, all kind of things that those countries can do、uh, to lessen their dependency on the、uh, dollar system. Because let's not forget,、uh, today、uh, one out of ten countries around the world. Let me repeat this: one out of ten countries around the world is under U.S. sanctions.、Uh, that's a lot of countries that are、uh, facing this this problem. And after seeing what they've been、uh, witnessing uh, uh, in recent months,、uh, they cannot feel secure anymore.、Uh, so if it happened to Afghanistan and Russia. It could happen to、uh, Belarus. It could happen to Zimbabwe. It could happen to even China. 
So um, there's no limit to what uh, could happen. And I think that until Washington wakes up and understands that this trigger happiness in using its long arm jurisdiction and using a sanctions policy in which every member of Congress can come up with a pet project to sanction this and that, uh, this, the, the aggregate uh, uh, sanction spree is uh, undermining the very same system that has brought America to be what it is today. Uh, I, unfortunately, I don't see this kind of... Um, this is actually a very important point. He's saying the very system that made America what it is, now they're using that as a weapon to, on others, but it's undermining the system that they made. So they made this swift system with the dollar and dollar being an international currency. And now when they put sanctions and other people can't trade in dollars, they're going to be forced to trade in others' currencies, right? And this whole currency issue goes back to because these people are talking about a problem and all they're thinking about is replacing A with B. But Islam actually gives the solution, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit as soon as we finish this uh, conversation here, this interview mind change in, in Washington um, and uh, unfortunately I see uh, them continue to go down the same path and therefore I think many many countries are uh, looking at it and, and recalculating their moves mm -hmm. uh, professor Chenjui, as uh, professor last just mentioned you know China itself could... recalculating their moves means going with China instead of America but the problem remains the same to be the next target in you know, the US officials senior officials you know uh, quite a few of them have already made a threat that uh, you know they would uh, sanction China uh, if China you know quote unquote in their words like help Russia in the Ukraine crisis. Uh, so what should China do you know along with this internationalization of yuan or increasing use of yuan to protect itself from uh, potential uh, sanctions from Washington? Well, unfortunately, uh, you know the risk against uh, some Chinese institutions, financial institutions, and firms uh, are real. Uh, uh, so even though. Uh, uh, these sanctions against uh, large Chinese companies would create far more damaging effects to those countries who uh, put the sanctions on, right? Because China, a lot of uh, large Chinese firms and large Chinese financial institutions play a very important role in the global financial system and, in, and play in the global supply chain. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, for China, you know, unfortunately, uh, I, I would advise the institutions and the companies to be careful. Uh, not to be, uh, not to be, uh, not to be uh, raising the probability of being included in in, in the so-called secondary sanctions. That is, you, if you continue to do business with those entities that are on the sanction list, you might be uh, next. So, so because uh, because such risk is uh, is very bad for business. On the other hand, uh, I think for the for the for the Chinese currency, for the RMB, as I said. Uh, China has all the right to guard their own interests, and as I said, by convincing more trading partners to use RMB instead of a third currency to settle trades with China, I think that's a very logical step. And I, I think that if you see these sanctions continue for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, RMB will be used more uh, as a trade currency, especially for those countries doing business with China. That's a good point. Well, with that, we come to the end of today's show. Many thanks to our guests. So what do we learn here? That uh, this system, this swift system, the dollar system, it's like a web on the earth. It's like a web of a spider. Okay, everyone's using that and everyone's caught up in that and no one can get out of that, like the insect caught in the web, right? And uh, if you allow that, then it's only a matter of time before the US says, oh, well, we don't like you. And we are going to use that as a weapon against you. So are you listening, uh, Yani, Pakistan and Saudi Arabia and the Muslim world and Turkey with its lira and Malaysia and Indonesia and Muslims in Bangladesh? Are you listening? Are you watching? Are you thinking that what is the Islamic solution to this? The Islamic solution is to get out of the web. And to establish a trade system based upon the currency that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave humanity, which is the gold and silver. And over here I'll mention, I'll put a link on the description as well as in the chat box for that coin that was made by Umar radiallahu anh, the weight, the weight, the minting of that coin, the weight 
as the same as the one that the companions of the Prophet ﷺ used. If you're interested in that, then you can uh, purchase that. Obviously, because it has a special minting, it costs more, it has more value because it has Islamic symbolism rather than you wearing coins that have all these symbols that are uh, devilish, uh, have uh, other meanings. You have a symbol that has an Islamic meaning and it's minted by the Mus uh, by, you know, with the Islamic symbols and in the weight that was established by Umar radiallahu anh. So I'll put that link there because the only way out of this for all the countries all the countries, all the Muslim countries have to think about an alternative to this now because the world is now becoming bipolar. You're not living in a unipolar polar world. And if you're not living in a unipolar world, well, you better not rely on one currency. And if you're going to rely on one currency, you know, China is thinking of its benefit, as you can see from this program, that how can we make China internationalized or their yun uh, internationalized? It's not about being here or there. It's about having the Islamic system in place. What is the Khilafah? What currency will there be under the Khilafah? There has to be gold or silver-based currencies. Period. And uh, over here, let me show you one more thing, inshallah. Uh, so let me start here now. Imran al-Bayt al-Maqdis kharab al yathrib the rise of Jerusalem will be the destruction of Yathrib, which is the pre jahiliya the Jahiliya name of Medina. Obviously, if Imran al Bayt al Maqdas, Jerusalem is being made by Muslims, they would never drop Medina. But if Jerusalem is being built up by non Muslims, then it becomes a threat to the people of Medina. How can Medina become destroyed? or impoverished, or kharab, destructed. It can only happen when the real falls and the Saudi government and regime falls. And when the real falls and the Saudi government falls, then that means what? The dollar fell. When the dollar fell and then the real fell, that means that we'll be living in a different world and probably it'll be a world that's not nation state based okay now what is the other thing i wanted to share with you is when this is the you can say the symbol of the financial system of the riba based monetary system swift when the symbol is a type of web on earth okay when the system is like a web on earth, okay, when this is their logo, this is, and you're reading the Quran, and the Quran is telling you what? The Quran is pointing to a, the, the, the spider and the web. So when you see the web all over the world, and you then must be thinking when you see something like a symbolism, a symbol, a sign that is pointing to something in the Quran, then that sign must have some value. It must have some value. So if the this uh, this symbol that they have of the web or the World Wide Web or this symbol of this this kind of like web around the world that they have it has to somehow relate to a verse that is also talking about something similar and so just as the web of the spider uh, is so weak this financial system uh, based upon riba is so weak and is beginning to break and unless countries and people in places and Islamic groups and Islamic institutions are not aware of what's happening in the world unless they don't realize that uh, this web, this financial web that has taken over the world, anything that is like a web uh, around the world, it, even though the threads may be strong uh, from the spider uh, the thread of the spider you can make silk which is stronger than steel 
but the foundations when it makes the house when it is on a, some corner of the house the 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 foundations are zero and it's so easy to break and it's so easy for it to pop it just takes the right people and the right circumstances and over time it just takes a wind to come and blow the whole thing away that's how strong the uh, web of the house of the spider is and the same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the riba system in another place yamhakullahu riba Allah destroys riba Allah destroys riba and if you have a riba system that is in the shape of a spider's web then even more the destruction will come even more forcefully and strongly and everyone's counting on this web structure around the world and very few people are even thinking of an alternate especially in the muslim world if you don't have an alternate you're going to be in a very difficult situation and so this is what i leave you with is that number one the verses of quran when they talk about a certain symbol and then you see that symbol somewhere else then that symbol has to have meaning because the quran is haq and every word of it is true and when the quran gives you a symbol something symbolic and you see that in another place then the two must be relating to one another at some level okay so and it's not by surprise right this it's the same logo that you see for example for the united nations right this is the united nations web okay then you got the world wide web uh let me see if i can this is the united nations web this is the world bank you know the world bank logo this is the world bank uh, that is a, a branch uh, of the um united nations world bank is an international financial institution that provides loans to developing countries this is also a web I meaning this is a web that they want to catch you in right and so uh whether it's the united nations the world bank whether it is swift whether it's the world wide web it all has the same symbolism of the spider of the spider's web so now let's look at another thing here the thing one of the things i learned from dr omar is the importance of symbolisms so i have this dictionary of symbols if in this book if you go to the section that says spider okay it actually quotes the verse of the quran so i'm going to read this part to you the spider is regarded and this is page uh 903 of this book the spider is regarded in the first place okay uh devoted to spinning and weaving you know the moving of money from bank to bank it's weaving its way it's spinning its way just like the united nations just like the world bank the moving of the money the uh moving of uh of the tcp protocol for example in the internet okay while the thread is reminiscent of that of fate okay in quran emphasizes what is woven is extremely fragile fragile but verily the frailest of all houses surely is the house of the spider okay so it evokes fragility of a reality which is no more than an illusion and, de and deceptive appearance so when you look at this symbol and it is being used by whoever satanist whatever you want to call them when they're using the symbol of the spider's web it's uh what does it evoke from a symbolic perspective one of the aspects it evokes is what is the fragi the fragility of something the fragility of fate and so when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in the cave and the spider web comes right and you can see the prophet if you just look down they've come so close to the prophet but they can't this is fate fragility of fate right but it can be in in this case it's used in the positive sense but in the negative sense as it is used here the money that we're given the financial system that we're surrounded by based upon loans upon loans upon loans upon loans the riba system 
right? This riba system that's based upon loans uh, is very fragile. In reality, it's very fragile. It has no real strength. And uh, even though in this interview they're talking about, you know, the fragility of the U.S. dollar, but it's the same system whether it is China or the it's, it's currency that is being manipulated at one level or the other. So the only way out is what? The only way out is something solid that has a solid foundation, a solid base known as gold and silver, amongst other forms of trading. In fact, uh, tomorrow, inshallah, or the day after, I'll put up another video of mine about uh, sunnah trading also inshallah ta'ala uh, but I wanted to share with you that these symbols when you see the world with the nur of Quran when you see the world with the nur of uh, the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have meaning right as soon as you see a certain thing that reminds you of a web you're going to be like oh wait I better be careful of this thing why Muslim leaders couldn't see why Muslim leaders never uh, why did they fall for this web uh, and so whether you're Pakistan or you're Bangladesh or you're Turkey or Saudi Arabia or whatever you are or whatever you're planning, if you don't have gold and silver, you, in the end of the day, you have nothing. Because when the financial system collapses, it's all going to collapse and it's going to collapse. No one particular currency is going to save you over the other. And uh, so I'll just leave it at this point here today, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, uh, one thing I did want to mention. Where is the spider in the web? The spider always hides itself. The spider does not come in the view of the people. The spider uses the web to catch. And the spider only makes itself appear once it's caught somebody and it wants to devour somebody. But once somebody is completely like in the net of the threads and completely caught, then the spider comes and eats you up. Right? But otherwise, the spider is in the corner somewhere, not to be found. The spider wants to hide itself. That's the nature of the spider. Spiders are creatures that hide themselves. Okay, so here we go. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.